that I picked apart earlier this morning too. So, kyoa komatsudo de hamburger o tabemas. Excellent. Everybody understand what it says? Makudo, makudo, narudo. McDonald's. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why it's in katakana, makudo. It, yeah, it's yeah. short for McDonald's. Makudo, narudo. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So this one. Toshokan de hon o yomimas. Anybody? Me, library, going. Uh, There's no going in here. Right, sorry, that. Sorry. Um, so, yomimas is read. read. Yeah. So, what are you going to read? A book. A book, a book at the library. At the library. Okay. Yeah. So, watashi wa toshokan de hono yomimas. I, library at book, read. <laughs> right? So. Anyone thinking this is where they got the inspiration for Yoda? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Ashi wa uchi de ben kyo shimasu. I study where? At my house. At home, yes. Okay. Over here, let's look at a few more. Kista ten de ocha o. Yeah, no minimas. Yeah, no minimas. And ma cuts through when you read it. Okay, no minimas. Otherwise, it looks like you couldn't decide whether you were writing a ma or a ho. Is ho the thing one that doesn't cut through? Ma does. Lots of 
um, written communication forms also have that kind of. Is the first kanji on magazine, is that uh, miscellaneous or what does that mean? I don't really know it as a standalone character. I only know it as part of Zashi. I would have to okay. look it up as a separate piece to see. So anyway, so Uchide Zashiyoyomas. Okay, so what all of these have in common is we've got some components that have to do with, let's see, I'm, I want to do the same color scheme that I did up here for all of these. So what if, what's one thing all of these have in common? They're all in Japanese. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> so, um, structurally, what's something they all have in common? They have verbs at the end. Yes, verbs are always at the end, right? Notice what I'm doing. I'm marking all your verbs, right? And you'll notice that verb plus period is kind of a unit because they're always at the end, right? The only other thing that can come after a verb in a normal Japanese sentence is something like ka to turn it into a question, or excuse me, yo or ne as a sentence ender particle, right? You know, yo for emphasis, ne for eliciting agreement with your statement, right? So if you're saying something like watashi wa uchi de benkyou shimasu. If you wanted to be more emphatic about that, you could add yo, right? Watashi wa uchi de benkyou shimasu yo. I'm going to study at home. You know, you sound very enthused when you say it that way, right? If you say watashi wa tushokan de hono yomimasu ne, that's, that's kind of a weird one. If you left out the watashi wa, Toshokan de hono yomimasu would be like, you, you study at the library, right? Kind of like that. If you, if you leave out the watashi wa part. Okay, but anyway, so I circled all of the verbs in black. Okay, now the next part I'm going to point out green segments, hon o and toshokan de are middle of the sentence segments generally. Okay, gakko de, kohi o, uchi de. There you go. Okay. Um, oh, I missed a sentence with the verb here. Okay, kabemas. Okay. Hamba ga o, makudo de. Right? Um, over here we've got ocha o, we've got saten de, right? Terebi o, ice cream o, uchi de, we've got zashi o, we've got uchi de, right? So what do you notice about green segments? They're the English equivalent of direct objects. They're the English equivalent of direct objects and prepositional phrases, prepositional phrases where something is occurring, right? At a certain location, right? So location phrases for like where the event is occurring and direct objects. And where are they structurally in a sentence in Japanese? before the verb, which can be the middle of a sentence, but look, some of those, they're the beginning of a sentence, right? Because what would otherwise be the beginning of the sentence is kind of optional, right? Not necessarily in English, but in Japanese, right? Watashi wa, optional. This watashi wa, also optional, right? Kyowa, what's that? 
Think about that for a second. What's kilowatt doing? We've got another Wakashi watt over here, and we've got another kilowatt. What's kill? Today. Okay, when you put a wa after kill, what's that doing? Anybody know? Checking to see whether this is even recording. I think I forgot to turn it on. Oh, no, I did have it turned on. Okay. Any question? A any guesses, rather? What's the wa doing after a kill? Why is that even possible? Does anybody remember reading that segment about the grammar? It's in your textbook. Okay, so what they're basically saying is that wa can be a topic marker, not just a subject marker. And by that they mean that although it's not technically the subject of the sentence, it's not the person doing the action, it can be used as a sort of emphasis or a sort of, by the way, if talking about today, are you going to study at the library today? You know, or talking about today, I'm going to eat a hamburger at McDonald's. Or talking about today, I'm going to study Japanese in the library. Okay, do you see what I'm talking about? So you can do kill wa for that specific purpose of kind of emphasizing today I'm going to do this. Maybe to give a contrast, well, I didn't do it yesterday and I'm not planning to do it tomorrow, but today I'm doing this. Or making contrast in some other way, explicitly or implied. Okay, that's basically what that wa is doing. Does that kind of make sense? How would you work it if you like were talking about somebody other than yourself? Like, would you have two wa's or? No, um, it depends. Like, if you're establishing for the first time in the conversation that Mary is going to study at the library today, Mary is on wa kyo tosokan de so you would just use the wa on Mary because she's the one you're telling the information about. But then if you're continuing to talk about Mary, it's already been established that that's who we're talking about. And you were saying maybe you told people what her activities were yesterday and you were telling them about her plans for the rest of this week and now you're telling them what she's going to do today and you want to contrast that with all those other statements you already made about her, then you could use kyo wa tosokan de And you wouldn't have to say Mary again because it's already established that that's who you've been talking about all this time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things about Japanese that's flexible is that you don't have to restate the subject once it's established. Okay, we know we're talking about Mary. I'm giving you all this information about her. I'm telling you where she's from, how old she is, what she likes, what she doesn't like, what her plans are for tomorrow, what her plans are for today, what her plans were yesterday, what she did yesterday. And if in all of that, I want to put emphasis on, oh, and by the way, on Thursday, she's going to do X, Y, Z. I could put the wa there right after the word for Thursday. So, but you could also have it as a molt statement? Or? Molt would be if you're making a comparison that she's going to do X and she's also going to do Y, then the molt would end up on the place of contrast. So, you know, if for example, X o shimasu, she's going to do X, Y mo shimasu. You would actually put the mo there with, in place of the o. But I don't think this chapter talks about that yet, so let's not go into that too much. Okay? But um, the other point I was trying to get at, though, is you see how I color-coded things red 
are the things that are at the beginning of sentences, if at all, and they are optional. The things that are circled in red can be dropped, right? But if they're going to be in the sentence, they're going to be toward the beginning, right? The things that are in green are going to be somewhere in the middle of the sentence, and then the black is the end of the sentence, right? Also notice the way I subdivided things. The piece that's all together as one unit like that moves as a unit. If the two green things want to swap places, they can, as long as they keep the whole unit together. So, for example, this person wrote Watashiwa Zen Zen Gakko de Kogi o Nomimasen. I don't drink coffee at school at all. Okay? If that person wanted to say Kogi o Gakko de Nomimasen, that works. You can take these two, the two green segments, and swap them. But you have to keep the debt with the location and the o with the direct object, even if you're putting the location at which you do that activity closer to the verb and the direct object further away. Does that make sense? So the, the, the main point there is that the particles are serving that function of identifying that this is the direct object, this is the location at which something is going to occur, even if you shift the word order around, this does not become a location, so you cannot put de with kohi, right? You're not going to drink the school at the coffee, right? <laughs> so be very aware of the fact that just because kohi and gakko are both nouns, that does not mean that you can swap their locations but leave the particles in place. Okay, it's very important that the o is marking the direct object, the de is marking the location, and if there's a wa, it's marking the person who's doing the action. Right? You, you cannot put watashi o kohi wa. Right? No matter what order you're putting in the in sentence, you cannot say that the coffee is going to drink you. Right? Okay. I've had students come up with all kinds of craziness about the sushi eating the grandmother because of particle mistakes. You know, they were trying to say my grandmother eats sushi and they ended up saying sushi ate my grandmother. <laughs> you know. So you got to be careful about that hungry sushi. <laughs> um, what about the zen zen? Can you like move that around in the sentence? Or is it, is zen zen like could it? actually get moved also. It, although it's in red because phrases that have to do with time generally occur close to the beginning of the sentence. That's kind of a rule of thumb. But zen zen and amari in particular, because they get paired with negative verbs, are more frequently put close to the verb. And even other frequency adverbs could be right before the verb if they wanted to be, so or, or after here. So for example, stick right in between the different units. Yeah. So watashi wa gakko de zenzen kohi o nomimasen. That would work. Watashi wa gakko de kohi o zenzen nomimasen. That would work too. You know, even gakko de kohi o zenzen nomimasen with the watashi wa left out, that would work. Um, gakko de watashi wa zenzen kohi o nomimasen, that could work too. Partly what happens when you move the units around is the closer you place it to the verb, the more importance, more weight you're giving it in the sentence. So if you're sticking to a sort of usual structure, then it doesn't feel like you're giving anything any particular strong emphasis. Putting the zen zen closer to the verb puts a little bit more 
strength or emphasis on the fact that you don't do this activity at all. Putting the Lakashi wa closer kind of puts the emphasis on, I personally don't do this, even though other people think it's a good idea. You know? So when you do like Kyo or Ashita, why do you not use ni, you use wa? Ah, okay. So Kyo wa is because you're putting emphasis on the fact that today I'm going to do this, as opposed to some other day. Okay, that's what the wa does there. Why you wouldn't put me there brings us over to this. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. so good segue. Yes. <laughs> so there are time phrases that take me, time phrases that never take me, and time phrases that are sort of ambiguous, and some people put me with them and some people don't. Okay, and like I told my morning class, the optional me category is sort of hard to pin down, and there are people who will swear up and down that you should always put me here, and there, will pe there are people who will swear just as hard that you should never put me there. And it's partially a regional dialect difference. So, you know, like, if you grew up calling your favorite drink soda, and somebody else calls that same drink pop, you know, you're not going to convince the other person that they shouldn't call it pop anymore because that's somebody's dad, you know, <laughs> right? Um, you know, and just like they're not going to convince you that you shouldn't call it soda anymore because that's somebody's, you know, baking supplies, <laughs> you know, baking soda. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? The regional differences, idiom, idiomatic expressions and such, you know, sometimes one region says it one way, and one region says it another way. Depending on what part of Japan you go to the first time you go to stay for a while, you'll get used to whichever way is normal there. And then if you go back to a different dialect region the next time, they'll probably tell you everything you learned about that was wrong. <laughs> you know, that's life. And you'll develop a new habit, and then when you go back to your old host family at the first place, they'll laugh at you because you're saying it all wrong to them. You know, such is life. But the ones that absolutely must take me in terms of time phrases are specific times like times on a clock, times on a calendar, days and dates on a calendar. If you can map it, you can plot it on your schedule as a specific time or a specific day of the week or a specific date, it takes me. For sure. That's pretty much universal throughout Japan. Okay? If it is the question word itsu, when, if it is a frequency adverb such as tokidoki, zenzen, yoku, taite, amari, um, tokidoki, any of those, it doesn't take me. If it's a relative time phrase, by relative I mean Ashita is tomorrow, right? If we say ashita now, we mean Wednesday, right? If we say ashita on Wednesday, we will mean Thursday. That's relative time. It changes depending on when you say it. Make sense? So words like kyo, today, ashita, tomorrow. Words like day after tomorrow, day before yesterday, yesterday next week, next year, next month, all those kinds of phrases. Next weekend, all of those are relative time. They do not take me ever, okay? The ones that are optional or ambiguous about me are time of day phrases that are somewhere in between very specific and very relative, like asa. Well, I mean, asa is always morning, right? So in that sense, it's fairly specific, but it's not narrowed down as much as ichiji, one o'clock, right? So some people put me with asa because it's specific enough for them, 
And some people don't put me with ASA because they feel like it's sort of general because it's the whole morning. You see what I'm saying? So some people have different opinions about that one. Same thing with any phrase that has goro on the end, approximate. So ichiji goro is approximately one o'clock, right? So some people feel like, well, it's got ichiji in it. That's specific, so it should take me. Other people feel like, well, goro is so general, it's approximate, so it shouldn't take me. So even the textbook puts me in parentheses for some of these phrases. Okay? Bless you. So, um, so that's what this whole little chart was about, those three divisions. You've got your main two divisions, specific time, okay? Specific time is clock times, days of the week, dates from the month. Also, like um, a specific month, like um, Ichigatsu ni in January. The, the months in Japanese, by the way, are just the numbers 1 through 12 with the suffix month on them. <laughs> so nice and easy. So it's literally first month, second month, third month, like that. Okay. Hi. So if you don't use me, do you use wa? Like you don't have to. You can actually just put a comma and a slight pause in your voice when you're speaking it. So, for example, um, let's put this one. This where it says kyo wa makudo de hanbago wo tabemasu. You could just say, Kyo, makudo de hanbago wo tabemasu. So if you're not making a point out of the fact that today you're going to do this when normally you wouldn't, or you know somebody's asking you, hey, what's your plan for today? And so you're being very specific. If, if that's not the case, you don't have to put the wa there. You can just say, Kyo, makudo de hanbago wo tabemasu. And that's just... Today I'm going to eat a hamburger at Mukamas. But you could like potentially put wa in any of them, like even the optionals or. Yeah, ichiji goro wa watashi no tomodachi ga kimas. You know, at one o'clock or so, my friend is going to come. So if you're, you know, let's say your your classmate ha has asked you ichiji ni. Hey, you want to study together at one o'clock? And you're saying, well, that's not a great time for me. Why? Because ichiji goro wa tomodachi ga kimasu. My friend is coming at about one o'clock, so I can't study with you then because that's when my friend is coming and I'm going to be busy with my friend. So that's an example of when wa might work when you're, when you're putting the emphasis on, well, yeah, nice idea for us to study together, but that particular time that you just named doesn't work for me for this reason. So that's an example of when wa would be very appropriate there. Okay, any of these phrases that could take ni, you could put ni there instead, right? Ichiji ni tomodachi ga kimasu. My friend is going to come at one o'clock, therefore I can't study with you. When ni is required or possible, and you also want to put that emphasis on it, you can actually do ni wa. You can actually put them together. Ichiji ni wa tomodachi ga kimasu. At one o'clock, my friend is coming. That we do it with emphasis in our voice. Hey, you want to study together at one o'clock today? Well, at one o'clock, I'm going to be busy doing this. See what I'm saying? So we do it with voice. Japanese does it with particles. Okay, so you can do ichiji niwa. And you can also do wa in place of ni um, with the optional ones. And you can do wa or nothing with the ones that don't take ni at all. Okay, but you would not do niwa with something like this because these never take me. Make sense? 
But that's also getting beyond the scope of this chapter. So. Okay. But the main thing I was trying to make a point out of was, first of all, you need your particles in their appropriate spots, right? So something like this, you definitely need the o here. Nihongo o ben You can't leave that out. The wa here is actually optional. You can say ashita toshokan de nihongo o ben But if you wanted to put a wa there for emphasis, ashita wa toshokan de nihongo o ben You can put the emphasis by putting the wa there. So this one's actually optional. That's vertical parentheses, by the way. <laughs> okay. Any questions about the grammar structures, how they work? So you don't need wa, like, after the ashita or the kyo? You don't need wa. Okay. It's optional. All right. Yeah. It's common, but it's not required. It could just be a comma. And if you wanted to put time before it, um, how would you do that? Okay, let's say you wanted to add like ichiji, one o'clock. Yeah. I would put ichiji after the wa, actually. I would put ichiji ni tosokan de nihongo ben Okay. So today at one o'clock, I'll study for the library. Right? Kyo wa ichiji ni tosokan de nihongo ben or, kyo ichiji ni toshokan de nihongo o benkyo shimasu. So, whether you're keeping the wa or dropping it, generally Japanese time phrases start with the more general and go to the more specific. So, kyo encompasses more time than ichiji, so kyo would generally come first, ichiji would come second. Okay, and you know, of course, if you're talking about like 1.30 or, well, 1.30 p.m., we know how to do those phrases already, right? So, kyo, gozen, ichiji han ni, you know, toshokan de nihongo wo benkyo shimasu. And by the way, if you, if you break it down, gogo, ichiji han, doesn't that also follow that same rule of general to specific? Think about it. Gogo is PM. Ichiji, one o'clock. Han is the half past. That's a smaller increment of one o'clock, right? Make sense? And then Goro, if you're going to put that, would be here. Goro, approximate. Okay, and then Ni, if you're going to put it, would be after all that. Okay, and if you keep the goro, ni becomes optional. If you drop the goro, ni becomes mandatory. Make sense? Okay, but yeah, and if you, for example, instead of saying ashita or kyo for all of this, let's say this was all going to be specific to, say, Saturday, that you were going to do something at around 1.30 p.m. That what they actually do for that, believe it or not, is nichiyobi would be first because that's a whole day, so it's still larger than the 1.30 part, right? It's still larger than even the p.m. part because it's the whole day. but. Rather than having a knee here and another knee here, which sounds kind of funky, Japanese people generally would put a no there. So it's the 1.30 p.m. that belongs to Sunday. <laughs> Make sense? Okay. Nichiyobi no gogo ichiji han goro ni. Nihongo ben kyoshimasu, or whatever the plan is. Hi. Um, what was that thing you said about the goro uh, if you drop goro. it? Um, okay, if there's no goro, you definitely have to keep the uh, ni. Okay. If you're keeping the goro, the ni is optional because of this rule over here. Okay. 
Itsu is a question word. Okay. So, like, itsu, then kyo shimasu ka? When are you going to study? Okay. Itsu desu ka? When is it? Um, testo wa itsu desu ka? When's the test? You know. Itsu um, tabemasu ka? When are you going to eat? You can also use nanji ni. Tabemasu At what time will you eat? So itsu is more open-ended. The answer could be doyobi desu, you know, on Saturday, right? You know, game wa itsu desu ka? When's the game? Doyobi desu. It's on Saturday. But nanji desu ka is a specific what time is it, right? So the two are grammatically similar in the sense that you put them in about the same spot in a question. But itsu is a more open ended when, whereas nanji is what time. Right. So could the nanji paired with day to be like nan nanyobi? Hai? Nanyobi desu ka? What day of the week is it? You know, and then later when we learn how to do dates in the month and months within the year, there'll be, you'll have the option of doing nan with those to do what date and what month kind of questions as well. Yeah, the, all those sort of um, formulaic things do work usually in Japanese. Hi. So if you wanted to put like a day of the week at the beginning of the sentence, mm -hmm. can you put wa there? Or? Again, it's like with kyo, wa if or you're often. trying to put that emphasis. Okay. okay, so if you wanted to say on Sunday I'm going to do this, I never do it any other day of the week, but on Sunday I will, then you could do michiyobi ni wa. Again, it's going to take the ni wa because michiyobi takes ni. Okay, so michiyobi ni benkyo shimasu. I'm going to study on Sunday. Michiyobi ni wa benkyo shimasu. So I'm going to study on Sunday even though I spend the rest of the week goofing off, you know? So if you were uh, asking someone, sort of like, day of the week, um, you, uh, asking them what day of the week, uh, or let's say, sat do you want to go to the ice rink on Saturday? I'm not sure how to say ice rink. Yeah, but, well, uh, okay, but yet, doyobi wa do desu ka? You don't need a ni there because, um, in this case, you're asking, well, how about Saturday? Okay. Saturday wa? Do desu ka? But, do desu ka is how is it, right? But so you would use wa for... You could use wa there. You wouldn't use ni. But if you're asking them about Saturday specifically, would you use wa? Yes, you okay. can. So, yeah. Can so or should? Depends on the circumstances, okay. but you can. There are times when you should. Okay. Yes. Doyobi wa do desu ka would be one of those times. You know, like you're trying to make plans with your friend. You've established that you want to go to a particular spot. And you're having a hard time coming up with a day that both of you can agree on. And you ask your friend, well, how about Saturday then? Doyobi wa do desu ka? Or even just doyobi wa? That's like, okay, what about Saturday then? Come on. You know, you, you've run through the rest of the whole week already, and they keep saying no. So, doyobi wa? How about Saturday? Yes, yo. That's good. Hi. Would my nichi and my bond count as specific or relative adjectives? Ah. Like what they mean? They're over here. My ban and my nichi are like every day and every evening, right? So that's more like frequency adverb category than anything else. So my nichi ben kyo My ban gohan o tabemasu. You would not use a ni with those kinds of phrases. Make sense? Okay. I want us to have time for some actual practical application practice too. So if that answers people's questions, let's look at Kyokusho. Actually, going to be practicing asking and answering questions. 
Jennings. So um, I just I want to let a few people have a chance to ask and answer. So Cody San, can you read example for the person A and Tierra San person B? So that we've got a sample of how to ask a question and how to answer it. how that works? So asking the simple yes no questions is the same format that we already know. Just take a statement sentence, right? And add what to the end? Ka. Okay. So and then you can answer with hi or e and repeat the verb back for the shortest full sentence yes answer. Or ie and the negative verb for a short no answer. If you want to repeat back more of the original question, you may. Just make sure that the object marker doesn't get separated from its object and other, you know, all the particles need to stay paired with what they went with originally if you're going to repeat it back. So you can't repeat back o yomimasu. You would have to repeat back zashi o yomimasu. Make sense? Okay, so san Preform question. Anyone you want to pick to ask, and Jamie can answer. <laughs> any question you want to ask in Japanese using any of these verbs we've worked with? Oh my goodness, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> oh no. So, for example, do you listen to music? Do you read books? Do you play tennis? Any? I haven't. Uh, what are the examples? And ask one. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, uh, I'm going to use the example and see. <laughs> uh, you can kill food. So then I would just reply yes or no. And then, right. Okay. And it doesn't matter which one? Just pick how you want to answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, e ikimase. Ikimas. Ikimas. Hi. E ikimas. With the yes, I go. Ie ikimase. There you go. So if you're trying to answer with ie. I was thinking both at the same time. Yeah. But if you answer ie, then you can. Do the negative verb ending. If you answer e eh or hai, do the positive verb ending. Okay. That works? Okay. Dozo. Now it's your turn, Jamie. And okay. you're going to ask him again. Just You can pick one of the questions off of the exercise from last class or however you want to do it. So it's just that uh, tabemas okay. uh, is uh, eat, correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, uh, makudo de ta 
Tabi or yeah, that's yeah, fine. Makudo de. Makudo de tabemaska. That works. Tabemaska. Do you eat at McDonald's? Yeah. You don't have to specify what. You know, some people eat at McDonald's. Yeah. Some people refuse to set foot in the door. So makudo de tabemaska works perfectly. Yeah. There you go. See, makudo de tabemaska. Ie tabemasen. Perfect. Why? <laughs> we'll learn why another time. <laughs> okay. Dozo. I think they teach why in the same chapter that they teach some adjectives so that you can answer with things like it's too expensive, it's too cheap, it's poison, poison it's not <laughs> delicious, it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay. So you're going to ask Audrey something. Notice that the o has to be paired with the kohi. You, know, you can't separate it from the kohi. Even if you wanted to put zen zen in a different part of the sentence, the kohi o sticks together. Koyo zen zen nomimasen. Or zen zen kohi o nomimasen. Either one of those works. Dozo, your turn to ask Bethany something. gets used for a lot of things, but dinner isn't one of them. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, it lists sports, Hi. but it doesn't give the, the verb like to play, so she must. Just to do it. Okay. That's an example okay. of something that does require okay. she must. Okay. Don't worry, I don't <laughs> know. I you
Okay, now we're gonna get into some questions using time. Oh, great, yeah. Can we just do the other exercise like eight more times? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keep, keep practicing it, but this is gonna just add one more element, but everything else is kind of gonna be repetition of the same stuff. I was so busy trying to figure out like the grammar and how to do things, I didn't study the vocab, so I'm like, Okay, well let's look at the next segment and see if we can figure it out, okay? My other class got through one more piece, so I want to make sure that we at least try to catch up so that you guys are on the same page with them. It's much less confusing that way. <laughs> so, if you look at the header for Roman numeral 2, nanji ni okimasu ka, what's it asking? What's okimasu? Where is that? Yes, to wake up. So, nanji ni okimasu ka? What time do you wake up? Exactly. Notice that when there's no subject stated, questions imply the pronoun you, and answers imply the pronoun I, unless context makes it likely that it's something else. So, nanji ni okimasu ka is not what time does some random person wake up, it's usually what time do you wake up, unless we insert a name. So, um, in this example, they're actually doing meori san wa nanji ni okimasu ka, so it's asking what time does Mary wake up, right? And they've given us Mary's schedule in English here, so that we can look at that and then answer the questions as people ask them. Questions? So when it asks, what time do you get up, it would be a bit redundant to use Wakashi. Right. right. Just in the, which in the, time. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody just asks you directly, Nanji ni okimasu ka? You would probably just say, you know, Rokuji ni okimasu, or whatever time you want to okay. state. You wouldn't bother to say Wakashi wa, unless. You know, if I were, let's say I ask a question to the whole class, nanji ni okimasu ka, and then I'm ch choosing different people who've raised their hands to answer, okay. then you might choose to say wakashi wa to distinguish yourself from the other people. But on the other hand, it's still right. understood because you're speaking. It's not likely that you're going to answer what time Julianne <laughs> wakes right. up, right? You're gonna tell you what time you all, you yourself wake up, right? So if it's not necessary to make it clear, usually pronouns like that get left out in Japanese. If you need it there to make it obvious who you mean because it's not going to be clear otherwise, then people put it in, name or pronoun, usually. Okay, so Sierra-san, we're going to let you ask question number one, and Jamie's going to get to answer based on this chart. Mary-san. Uh,
Han Mi I Ikimas. Hi. That's it. Rosen, Hachiji Han Mi Okimas. Notice that he didn't have to repeat back the Gakko Ni part. He just did the time Ni Ikimas. Make sense? So if he wanted to, he could have said Gozen Hachiji Han Ni. Gakko ni ikimas, but the gakko ni part is implied. So the, the only parts that are necessary in your answer are the new information, in this case the time, because all these questions are asking nanji ni, right? So you need the time in your answer, and you need the verb in your answer. But the rest of it is redundant, so it doesn't have to be repeated. Make sense? Dozo, okay. sanba. Oh, that's me. Nyari, um, Nyari san wa Nanji ni Hiru go Han o Tabe mas ka. Or just ju niji ni tabemasu. Yeah, you don't have to say go go or go zen every single time. It depends, you know, again, on whether it's obvious or not. So, ju niji ni tabemasu. That works. Ja, uh, you get to ask Audrey the next question. Meiri san wa nanji ni kohi o nomimasu ka? By the way, if you wanted to say 5 p.m., there's nothing wrong with go go goji ni kaerimasu. I know it sounds crazy, but go go goji is a perfectly legitimate thing to say, <laughs> okay? Yeah, and if you're writing it out once you learn the kanji, that's three different kanji for the three different goals, <laughs> okay? So what was uh, I'm sorry, what was the where you don't have to specify? A, I mean, is it if it's just implied if you know that they get up at seven thirty a.m. You know. Yeah, I mean, if if you know that the person wakes up in the morning and, and have goes a relative bed, idea of their schedule, then the a.m. and p.m. doesn't have to always be stated. Okay. So yeah, what time she goes home? Uh, go, go, sorry, goji ni kairimas is fine because we were already talking about p.m. So we can assume that so, we're talking 5 p.m. that she's not like working a, a late night shift and returning at 5 a.m., okay. right? So that, that is fine, but if somebody wanted to put the p.m. in there, you know, some, sometimes Americans think, oh, that doesn't sound right because it's too many of the same syllable. Makes no never mind in Japanese, <laughs> okay? Dozo, you get to ask the next question. Okay, six, Hi. メアリさんは何時に勉強しますか? Okay, you get to ask the next question. Hi, and notice that 
that Nimas and Okimas do not take direct objects. You're not sleeping something, you're just sleeping, right? So that's an important little note. Okay, since um, Julianne didn't get a chance to participate yet, how about if you pick one of the things on the chart that didn't get a question asked about it and see if you can come up with a question for her. <laughs>
you're playing. So like I said, percussion takes to hit. Um, the, all the string instruments take hiku to pull, and then fuku is to blow into, you know, not just wind, and, uh, not just um, woodwinds, but also um, yeah. the brass. Yeah, yeah, trombones and clarinets all take the same verb. When you say want to, like what, what do you want uh, to do? That actually is a conjugation of a verb. So you, later on, we will okay. learn how to conjugate. Um, it, it's something called the stem plus a suffix to make want to do. And then you actually conjugate that suffix into a negative structure to say not want to do. And it also conjugates for past tense and past tense negative if you want to say did, did what want to do? or did not want to. Okay. Wanted to or did not want to. So yeah. You said that to cook is uh, yori suru. Hi. So that's just food and do. Well, so. yori is like cuisine, but yeah, yori suru is to cook. Mm -hmm. It's like to, to do cuisine. Okay. Um, and then depending on what it is you're cooking, sometimes they also use the verb tsukuru to make. And then if you're getting really specific, there are verbs for, you know, different kinds of cooking actions, you know, baking and frying and barbecuing over an open flame and such. I have like a cookbook by like a, like a, like a um, prominent like chef who like does shows for like the NHK and stuff. Yeah. And, like, like she put like this chart of like in her cookbook of like all the different words they have for like specific verbs for like cutting specific styles like julienne wow. versus like half moon cuts and yeah. yeah the Japanese chefs take their art very seriously and so I'm not surprised that there are probably hundreds of verbs in that specific profession that that's one of the interesting things about well, any language probably, but um, you know, especially languages that use a lot of kanji, you can end up with some very specific technical terminology that only specialists in that field will know because your average person on the street is not going to go out of their way to learn a few hundred extra kanji that nobody else on the planet knows except for the people who specialize in that field unless they're in that field. In they're Japanese or they're like in, in yeah. Asia. So like, you know, a native speaker of Chinese, for example, is if they're literate, they know around 3,000 characters. If they're an MD, besides the normal 3,000 characters, they also know several hundred or a thousand other characters that normal people don't necessarily know that are all like specific medical terminology and stuff. So there's like a whole medical dictionary full of kanji that lay people don't necessarily know. The equivalent of all that Latin that MDs have to learn. You know, but if you're doing it in Chinese, you have to learn it in character. So. But doesn't that stretch also all across China? It's not like the dialect. Yeah, it's every um, every specialty has their own specialized vocabulary. Japanese deals with some of that with kanji and specialized terminology, and some of it with katakana words. Honestly, especially in the modern age, if you're in robotics, for example, you do a lot of your work in English, even if you're from Japan because so much of what's been done with that kind of technology has been done by Westerners in English. So if you're typing code, you're typing it with the English alphabet for the most part, right? So if you're encoding computer programs for some kind of highly advanced Japanese robot, you're still programming in a universal programming language that Americans can understand too. And I, I used to know a guy who was in robotics and he would travel to Japan sometimes on business. And he was amazed at how he could communicate just fine with his co-engineers on the project 
who were Japanese. They communicated just fine about their project in English, because he spoke zero Japanese. But they'd go out for beers after work, and these guys who had just been talking to him fluently in geek speak all day <laughs> long at work could not carry on a normal conversation in regular English outside of work because they knew how to talk engineering, yeah. but they didn't know how to talk conversational English. <laughs> they just like know some vocabulary um, yeah. in English. Yeah. They're trying to make like uh, computer coding like languages actually in other languages too, so that people that don't just speak English can also actually code too. Interesting. Yeah. But that's like new, and, like really hard complicated. Yeah, yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Chantal, did you have something else? Oh, um, in the vocabulary, uh -huh. it gives two examples for a home. Is yeah. one just like you have like this is a house, a home versus my house? Yeah. Home, Uchi usually is more personal sounding, okay. and ye is a little bit more generic sounding. Okay. Yeah. So like if I was driving through the neighborhood, I would like yeah. seeing houses as yeah. ye versus my home. Usually, but the two have a lot of overlap also, so don't be surprised if those rules don't always hold. Okay. If you were homeless, could you call a space under a bridge if you slept there your home or since it's not technically your place? <laughs> 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 if, no, but if it technically doesn't belong to you, could you call it? That's one square foot that is your I'm, home? I'm guessing they probably would still use that expression, even if it doesn't technically qualify. I mean, you know, Japanese host families will host exchange students, and the exchange students will get used to referring to that home that they were just borrowing as Uchi. It, and yeah. you know, they, they actually encouraged us, as part of the homestay experience when I was in high school, to call my host parents mom and dad in Japanese. Of course, what was really weird about that was that my host sisters did not call their own parents by traditional terminology themselves. So I was the only one in the household calling them by the traditional terms because my older host sister actually called her parents by their given names plus San. And my younger host sister called them Mama and Papa. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just their habit because they were an international family and they lived overseas when they were small. So <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir.